We're recording this on webinar Wednesday, and this conversation is around digital transformation. Um, we played around with a couple of ideas, and some of them were were kind of kind of wild. We had a like death to digital transformation. Uh, Granny's got to go. Why digital transformation needs to be retired. Uh, but the purpose of this conversation today was to discuss digital transformation as a crutch. Digital transformation at its inception and as a concept in no way, shape or form are bad things. The idea of making transformation uh, uh, a committed effort and putting time and organizational resources into continuing to innovate in no way is a bad thing. Um, and it's necessary, especially with where we're at today and how technology changes. The challenge that we see with a lot of the folks we work with, both in the public and private sector, is that often digital transformation is seen as an event. Digital transformation is seen as something that you do once in a year, once in a three year or five year window. Uh, a lot of times people look at digital transformation as we have switches, access points and firewalls that are end of life. So we're going to refresh them. And that counts as digital transformation because it's a new technology. Digital transformation was not meant to be measured by the technology you purchase. Digital transformation was supposed to be measured by the way that you are creating a culture that helps you to maintain your position at the cutting edge as best as you can. So for today's conversation, we want to talk about digital transformation and effectively retiring that term or moving away from that term to the concept of continuous transformation. The reason why we say continuous transformation at DOF is that technology is not the only piece that goes into your digital landscape. You have to look at your policies, your people, how you build consensus across an organization over time. One of the challenges is when you look at your digital transformation as an event is that digital transformation often is just a single purchase or a collection of purchases. A technology purchase does not help you to innovate if that technology pur purchase does not have a very particular and clear goal that helps you to get to a longer, uh, a long term position or place. That's one of the big challenges we see when it comes to digital transformation. The buy in is purely about the purchase rather than about the intended short term and long term impact. And with where we're at in the digital landscape today, we have to make sure that we're paying attention to what we're doing for our organizations to stay flexible and ever ready for all of the change that comes our way. It's not just about the technology you buy. It's about the policies and the strategies you put in place. It's about the people that you have in your IT department and the people around your organization because everything touches IT and everything relies on IT. So we're going to talk today about buy-in, consensus, policy and and uh, strategy, particularly as it relates to the impact from regu a regulatory position, particularly as it relates to policy from a regulatory position, as well as cyber insurance. So all of those things are relevant when it comes to digital transformation and making sure that instead of focusing on a single event, we're talking about continuous transformation for our organizations. So what is digital transformation? Digital transformation is the integration of digital technology into all areas of business. The goal, as, as we had talked about, the goal of digital transformation was to create a culture of innovation, a culture that tries to make sure that your organization is on the cutting edge or at the very least not falling behind. Again, making digital transformation a single event, many organizations are often just waiting until they fall behind to then try to get caught back up. But with where technology is today, if you're trying to catch up, you're never going to get there. You're already going to be too far behind. You are five years behind where you should be. You're catching up to maybe three or four years, and then you're still one year behind so that by the time you finish your, in your innovation process, your digital transformation process, mm -hmm. and everything is implemented and in place, at best, maybe you're two years behind. That's the challenge with waiting for digital transformation, uh, looking at digi digital transformation as a single event or a couple events over a period of time. Digital transformation and where we want to take continuous transformation is the modernization and change management so employees can em em embrace di uh, digitization. In addition to embracing digitization, it's also understanding what our responsibilities are as individual team members 
to helping our organization stay secure, stay resilient, and stay flexible. The idea of everything being digital, it's not just digitization. It's what we do with those resources and how we as individuals, as you know, the, the five fingers in the fist, how do we all work together to keep our organization secure, resilient, and doing our part? But that again requires continuous transformation. It requires buy-in. It requires everybody understanding their particular role and piece of this pie. So in this, we're gonna talk about some of the myths or some of the challenges that we've seen for customers we've supported um, as they try to get a digital transformation event, whatever that might be. Some of those might be around networking. Some of those might be around uh, security planning and security resources like a new SIM or an EDR solution. Uh, disaster recovery is a massive uh, area or point of concern for digital transformation. Um, a lot of times when people think of digital transformation, they think of kind of an end user platform. Um, they're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, we have internal end users who want to use a particular platform and get access to new resources. So we need to be transformational in that. Or we have outside or external users or customers uh, that want to have access to a new portal or we can give them access to this new resource and it creates a transformational event. Um, again, all of this stuff is so focused on a particular event to give or create a particular feeling of innovation or progress, but that's not how progress works. Oftentimes we look at progress and you measure your progress five years after the fact. You look at how far you've come, you look at all the changes that you've made last year to this year. So that's what we wanna to try to make sure that people are understanding from a technology perspective. When we're looking at continuous transformation, you are not measuring the impact of this in purely this new technology wows people. It's that over the course of the next year, as we're tracking our changes and as we're tracking the impact of all of this, we're seeing how challenging or how unsafe it was to do things in the way we did it before and comparing that to how much safer, secure, or easier it is to do things now. And that includes policy development, that includes supporting and training internal um, staff within your IT department and staff outside of your IT department. It's not just the technology, it's everything. So a prevailing myth when we talk about digital transformation is that it's similar to other business transformations. As I said, you're looking for that particular impact. But again, we wanna make sure that with a digital transformation, or as we're going to retire that term, continuous transformation, we're looking at the long-term efforts to rewire how an organization is going to continuously improve and change. And one thing I will say is that I think one technology event that does kind of play into this is the continued move to the cloud. And for some organizations who have decided to make a big shift from where they were before, not really utilizing the cloud much, maybe they had their website there or they were using you know, Microsoft 365, the cloud version of that subscription, they were kind of um, you know, baby stepping their way through that cloud experience. But for some organizations as they decide to jump wholly into the cloud and utilizing the cloud more extensively across their, across their environment, that has often required some people to change how they view their day to day, not just in regard to getting staff trained up and you know how they're going to manage that, uh, but also from a budget standpoint. What are the things that we're going to be doing as it relates to our IT operations that are going to impact our budget? What are the things that we're going to be doing from uh, a day to day operational standpoint? that are gonna play into these different costs. And as we're looking at our costs, we're looking at our actions, we're looking at our efforts, we're looking at our activities. So from a PwC survey, we found, or I wouldn't say we found, PwC found 60% of executives said digital transformation was, most, was most, their most critical growth driver in 2022. And that's great, but again, that's often focused around creating a particular impact rather than establishing a culture that's going to allow us to navigate, adapt to, and manage all of the new and different challenges that we see and we have to effectively fight day to day. We're looking at the people on the ground floor, we're looking at the organizations that they serve, and then we're looking at the 
business or the um, organizational impact that is intended not just for the institution itself, but also for the technology that supports that institution. So when we're talking about, again, and I know I keep laboring this, this is where we want to transition from digital transformation to continuous transformation. We want to make sure that as we're focusing on this, the digital capability needs to expand. Your, your digital resiliency needs to get better. But you can't do that if you wait for a singular event or for that refresh period or for your next door neighbor to have an emergency to believe that you are truly uh, adaptive, that you can be proactive instead of reactive. And I think that's really what the, the heart is of digital transformation initially was about giving an organization the resources to truly be proactive and how they serve their internal users, their external users, and also the organization itself. But with digital transformation being so focused on a singular event, we have to transition to continuous transformation, which is focused on continuous activity, continuous improvement, continuous evaluation of where we're at, what we're doing, and how we can get better. That gives us the resources to expand our digital capability, as we discuss here, also our digital resiliency. That way we can put ourselves in a position where we are not scrambling every time a new regulatory standard comes out or cyber insurance providers tell us that we need to do X, Y, and Z in order to remain compliant or our premiums will skyrocket or potentially we'll get dropped from coverage. Um, you know, and these, these are the drivers that I think for the IT leaders that we work with and for the organizational leaders that we get to interact with, those seem to be the things that are causing them a great deal of stress in addition to budget and you know uh, uh, staffing challenges which are affecting everybody but these drivers these external forces there's always going to be an external force we need to figure out how we put ourselves in a position where the external forces are not becoming a nightmare for us and are just becoming another thing on our to-do list something that we can do you know and that's the other challenges we have a lot of folks we work with who have long to-do lists, and for them, it seems like many of the things on their to-do lists are not impossible, but such a big lift. Continuous transformation is about making change more manageable. Instead of it being a massive lift or feeling like at times it's impossible, how do we make sure that we can cut this down to size? And for a lot of our transformation events, they can be done piecemeal. They can be done in a phased approach. They can be done piece by piece. But if you wait to get to the point where your you know, hardware is at year six, it's kind of hard to do a phased refresh for hardware that's at year six. You could have started making that transition. You could have started uh, 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 transforming some of those resources at an earlier stage. You could have looked at some of the policy elements, uh, some of the ways that maybe those resources getting older was could have been impacting um, configurations as it relates to your network, uh, the ability for policy to be enforced accurately. Uh, when you're talking about vulnerability and patch management, as those resources are getting longer in the tooth, how does that impact your ability to maintain those uh, uh, necessary updates? Those are all things that go into continuous transformation. And it doesn't feel like transformation because it's not big, it's not grand, it's not massive. But if that's the thing that stops you from being breached, and allows your organization to afford to avoid being taken down for a few days or a few weeks at a time, then yes, it is transformation. Yes, it is big. It doesn't have to be a massive event to have a massive impact. And that's why we want to transition from digital transformation to continuous transformation. So organizations digitally transform because they need to innovate and become more agile. A successful digital transformation increases productivity and employee satisfaction. Uh, as well, I would add in uh, our ability to know how secure we are at any given point in time. And we're never going to be 100% secure, um, but we need to be able to know how secure we are at this point and also how quickly we can recover if something were to happen. Organizations that are successful in digital transformation have a richer understanding of their customers, users, and their needs. And that's where we had talked previously uh, about evaluating where you're at on a regular basis. There are too many times where 
IT departments will know there's an issue, but not really be able to pinpoint the cause of that issue. We want to try to limit that as much as possible, and there are a lot of resources. We try to make sure we talk about free resources available because there are plenty of organizations that work on tight budgets. Again, both public sector and private sector that work on tight budgets. Some of those resources might be built into your networking solutions that allow you to assess uh, how well you align with NIST standards or uh, how successful your policy enforcement efforts have been at the network level, um, allow you to do um, internal network, I wouldn't say audits, but internal network reviews at a low level to see what's going on with your network from a traffic and performance perspective. Um, you can utilize cybersecurity, uh, cyber insurance resources. Uh, a lot of cyber insurance partners that we refer to our customers have security auditing resources that will either send you notifications if they see something or that you can ask them, hey, can you look at this? This is something that's a concern for us. And they'll let, let you know because by being proactive, their goal is to hopefully not have to have you get breached and then deal with you know payouts and claims and damages and things of that nature. So again, we're looking at being proactive. We're looking at being continuously transformational to try to avoid a long or larger problem down the road. So some of the elements that we want to look at as far as continuous transformation and what again digital transformation has tried to do but has been lost in the repositioning of digital transformation as a singular event. The ability to craft a clear strategy focused on business value. A lot of that comes from knowing and being able to connect from a, an IT department perspective. What is your impact on your organization? And it's very easy to say, you know, we're the, the lifeblood of the organization, we're the nervous system, we're the, the heartbeat, whatever you want to say. But being able to tell the finance department, you guys wanted to do X, Y, and Z, or you did create this innovation. Uh, this is the work that's required from our, from our side of things to make sure that that is not just a supported change, but also a maintained day-to-day uh, -day operation. Being able to communicate that is incredibly important because, of course, if we're not building buy-in across the organization, it becomes very, very challenging to do things like implementing multi-factor across an organization, which has been one of the more consistent challenges that we hear from our customers and IT leaders generally. When we meet at conferences or, or different events and meetings, uh, multi-factor implementation has been very challenging. Um, even in spaces where there is a regulatory requirement to do it, for some reason, we still see a requirement from those IT departments, maybe even the IT leader themselves, to actively create buy-in to address frustration um, and to persuade people that this is going to be valuable for them and for the organization. Um, and that just further shows that even in situations where people are forced to do something, by an external by an external uh, force like regulatory policy, there still needs to be convincing, and that's just that's just the reality of that. There's no reason to fight that, and we can't fight that. Building buy-in, being persuasive, understanding what is going on across your organization and where the pushback hurdles or landmines might be, that's just as important as knowing your security posture from a technical perspective. Building a strong talent bench with in-house engineers, and this is a fantastic concept from a digital transformation perspective, but understanding the staffing challenges that we're seeing across the IT landscape, that's easier said than done. So with continuous transformation, how do we ad adapt and adjust to whatever your current reality is? That's, again, continuous transformation, continuous adaptation. Distributed technology that allows teams to innovate independently. There are a whole host of resources that can fit into that category or under that headline, but figuring out what the right fit for you is always going to be the challenge. What the right fit is for you is always going to be the challenge. There are always going to be technologies that sound great, and there are more than a few technologies that can do the job well. But it's a matter of time. So that's where I would say for us as resellers, we work to make sure that we are providing information, knowledge, and updates that are relevant to the customers we work with. 
not every partner that we work with, not every manufacturer we work with is going to be the right fit for every customer we work with. But that's our responsibility and anybody that you might work with, that's their responsibility to know you well enough or to take the time to learn and understand you well enough that they're bringing things to you that are relevant to you. They're bringing things to you that are a value add. It's not just about finding somebody that you can submit a, a purchase order to and does what you tell them to do. It's about finding somebody that understands the goal that you have and isn't going to waste your time and drag you into you know, a never ending sea of meetings just because they want to. It's about finding somebody who's going to be able to bring you things that you just don't have time to search for. And all the time that you have in a day and all the things that you have to do, there's going to be something that slips through the cracks. So allowing somebody like us to be that person that helps you to see what maybe you missed or find information that you would not have known is out there, that is a great value that I think we provide at DOF Creations and that any good vendor partner is going to provide to you. It's not just about you know sitting around waiting for you to call and say you want to buy something. It's about helping helping them make sure that you're informed of what's going on. And that might be new policies. That might be, like we talk about at DOF all the time, free resources that you can utilize based on what you've already purchased or what might be publicly available, particularly with Homeland Security and some of the government entities that are providing knowledge, training, and resources to support, particularly in the public sector, as well as nonprofits. Um, all of those things are valuable. Just because it doesn't necessarily have a price tag on it doesn't mean that it doesn't doesn't mean that it won't create an impact for you. Access to data that teams can use as needed. I think that fits well under the ability to craft clear focus, clear focused business strategies uh, or business value. You need to make sure that you know what the value is and then what metrics and measures are you using to quantify or demonstrate that value. And then strong adoption and change management. The adoption piece, again, is where we talk about buy-in. We keep talking about buy-in, but at the end of the day, if you don't have buy-in, there won't be adoption. So common knowledge about digital transformation, most digital transformation events fail, 70%. And as we continue to discuss, making it a single event, is one of the biggest challenges to making digital transformation effective and why it has become a crutch in our opinion at DOF. You're waiting for a single event or you're using the single event as an effort to try to push your organization forward to try to push change. The challenge is that there has been no buildup, no progress, no slow and steady step steps made towards getting everybody on board to regular innovation. So now there is a large event or there is a multi-departmental event or there is a big budget event that you're now needing to get buy-in on, but there was no buy-in previously. And this is the value of buy-in is that if we're getting buy-in, we're getting small support on small things on a regular basis as an IT department to make sure that the goals and the initiatives you have are believed in and valued and understood. That makes it easier to do additional projects as we go forward from day to day, month to month, and year to year. So management may not buy in or foster so success. Management may not buy in or foster success. Employees may not emb embrace change. We see this particularly in the public sector as it relates to multi-factor adoption. And teams may struggle to collaborate effectively. That is a big challenge if you're bringing in multiple departments to work on a single project, and every department sees their piece as being the most important piece. And of course, in IT we will see ourselves as being the most important piece there, especially as it relates to technology. But everybody has a critical piece to play. So how do we work together? How do we buy into this as a team and make sure that we're doing this together? Similarly, if transformation strategy embraces digitization, but processes remain manual, an organization will fail. And that's something that we're seeing more and more, especially, especially it's a challenge when we see IT departments that are very, very understaffed or short staffed compared to their workload the effort to keep things in someone's hands when that person has 50 other things in their hands already is something that can create a lot of missed opportunities for improvement um and that's you know that's understanding that there are many different factors that play into that particular position or that particular environment that somebody's in um, it's not just as simple as saying somebody doesn't want to let go. There are a lot of reasons why you get to that place. 
But again, for us as your vendor partner, that's our, our job to understand that. And from a leadership perspective, to recognize that and to determine what is the benefit of that and what is the cost of that. And that's something that we have to try to make sure that we're doing from a technology perspective as it relates to continuous transformation. There's always a cost and a benefit to everything as it relates to technology. When we're looking at what is the cost or what is the benefit, I remember hearing an IT leader talking about the cost of trying to fight the fight around multi-factor authentication adoption. And that IT, uh, that IT leader regretted not paying the cost because the benefit would have been probably avoiding a cyber attack that occurred, I think, a few months after deciding not to push multi-factor. So when we're talking from an IT perspective about the cost benefit of a policy change, uh, a strategy a realignment or adjustment or a purchase, it's not just the dollars that may go into that. It's the cost of our efforts up front, the potential benefit on the back end, and also the pain that can come from not avoiding this problem now, or more often than not, not limiting the catastrophic impact of a potential future event. And that's the reality of where we're at now is that events will occur. Almost every organization is going to see some type of cyber event or cyber attack occur. The challenge is how big is this event going to be and how much of an impact is this going to make on us in regard to our day to day? Is this going to be something that we catch, we quarantine, maybe a few files are corrupted and we can back those up, recover, or we can recover them from our backups and move forward? Or is this going to be something that takes us down for days and weeks on end? It's not about preventing every single attack. It's about making sure that if something occurs, we are resilient enough, we are flexible enough, and we are ready enough to make sure that this impact is as small as possible. And really, it becomes a bump in the road. And that's what we're trying to get to. But again, understanding where you're at, what your current process is, and why your process is your process. And then going from there outside of that to building buy-in across your organization. And 70% of digital transformation events fail. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason why digital transformation, though it sounds nice, has become a crutch. Because it's become an event, it's become a single event or a few events over the course of a short period of, or over a certain period of time. And we just assume because it's digital transformation that one, people will buy into it, two, it'll be successful, and three, it's gonna be something that we can look back on and see the value of it long-term. More often than not, unless it's a purchase that you know was important for you, we're looking back on it going, I didn't really get the value out of that that I was hoping for. But that's a big part of just like the cost benefit analysis. What is the value you're looking for in this continuous transformation event? What is the value you're looking for for continuous transformation over time for your organization? And I know the term experimentation can be a bad word at times, but technology is science and science is innovation or science is experimentation. So we have to accept the fact that there is going to be a need for experimentation at some point. Um, there's going to be a need for experimentation and a willingness to learn new things. Um, but again, that's where you can leverage a partner like DOF to make experimentation safer and easier for you, to provide support in learning and growing and making sure that your staff is ready for and comfortable with some of the changes you're asking them to make. It's important to experiment and learn rapidly, but it's also critical to resist the temptation to develop use cases with exciting new technology that doesn't end up creating value for your business. A lot of times we'll look at case studies, we'll look at samples and say, well, I want that. Where are you compared to where that case study organization is? How well can you track with that case study organization? Where is your organization at from a buy-in perspective compared to that organization? All of those things are incredibly important. And I think sometimes trusting use cases and trying to copy and replicate, you know, it's, it's great to say, you know, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. We use that same term at DOF. Anytime we can replicate one success, we want to do that as much as possible. But if you're just blindly trying to replicate someone else's success, you're experimenting without admitting that you're experimenting. 
we have to consciously experiment. We have to know that sometimes we're going to try something and it may not work. That's the value of demos. That's the value of proof of proof of concepts. That's the value of baby stepping into something, getting comfortable with it, testing it out, seeing what's wrong, what's right, and what can be do what can be done better going forward, and then taking all of that information, building your personal strategy, your organization's path forward, and then implementing it. There are sometimes we see folks that they experiment without realizing their experiment uh, without realizing they're experimenting they trusted somebody who told them this was going to work it's all going to be great you know it's digital transformation this is new this is better than what you've been doing but that process of slow steady patient experimentation to determine where you're at today where you want to get to in the future and how these resources these policies these strategies the support for your staff is going to help you get there the reality is Anything that you're doing from a digital perspective is a bridge. You have point A, which is where you're at, the work that you have to do day to day, and B, and, and, uh, and your destination, which is gonna be the place that you would like to get to, the intended goal, the impact, the way you need to support people. All of this is just a bridge from where you're at to where you need to get to. And if you have to, to test out a couple of different paths along that way to successfully get to that place, that's okay. But make sure when you're experimenting, you're consciously experimenting. Do not trust a use case. Do not trust a vendor who just tells you it's going to work. And then you find out when the bullets are live, when things are real, that it doesn't work for you that way. One of the situations that we often see is a sizing issue. Very often, folks will just trust that this particular switch or firewall or, um, you know, it might be uh, like a, a disaster recovery a backup appliance or even sometimes servers. You'll just trust that because somebody said another organization used something this size or whatever it might be, that that's the one that works for you. And we regularly see organizations that have appliances that are missized or misconfigured. And that creates a lot of pain. But you thought you weren't going to have to experiment. You thought you weren't going to have to test anything out. And that's why you trusted it, only to find out that you're testing it in a live setting and it's failing. And that's the last thing you want. It's OK if stuff fails, but it needs to fail during a conscious test in a test environment. That's why we do demos. That's why we do proof of concepts. That's why we kick the crap out of some of our resources on our customers' behalf or allow our customers to, because the last thing we want is for it to fail a test in a live situation. If it fails the test before, we can fix it, we can clean it up, or we can figure out, hey, we gotta throw this out and come up with something new. We experiment consciously, we experiment in advance, and we do not experiment on accident. And we never experiment on accident to our, to our customer's detriment. So I've talked about buying quite a bit. I've talked about needing to persuade it, particularly from a technology perspective or an IT department perspective, persuading, persuading your colleagues, persuading your staff, persuading the people that work with you to understand why your work is so important and why the things that you believe in and the things that you value are critical and important. So when we're looking at one of the flaws of digital transformation is the continued the continued separation of leadership in the digital transformation process, again, because it is a singular event. Digital transformation, because it is not a constant and continuous effort, does not give you necessarily the opportunity to build buy-in over time through small successes and small events, small policy changes and small innovations. The goal of continuous transformation is to do small things on a regular basis, so that if a large event occurs, you have the buy-in support and the team in place to make sure that that large innovative effort, that large transformational effort can be more successful. We've seen more and more organizations start to adopt uh, a disaster recovery team or a cyber attack response team, which is fantastic. But again, some of the challenges remain in that is that they are, they've built a team so that they can say they have a team and feel as though they're prepared for a cyber attack. That team is not constantly preparing for attacks. They're not doing their simulations. They're not assessing the value and the quality of their backups. They're not determining what it is they're doing day to day to try to reduce their risk and exposure, and then putting a plan in place, an actual plan in place, for if some of those things fail, if something's broken, or if something just slips through the cracks. 
you write something down on paper one time, you look at it once a year, you come together and you meet as a team with some coffee and say, hey, we met and you move forward. That is the same thing as the digital transformation model where you're just checking off a box or you're waiting for something to force you to go forward with this event. We cannot wait. We cannot be reactive and we cannot wait for an event to force our hand. That is why continuous transformation is more valuable and more impactful than digital transformation. So when we're looking at digital transformation, in a perfect world, it requires large scale coordinated efforts of coordinated efforts of our resources. The only person that can make that level of sustained uh, change happen would be the CEO or the equivalent. We're talking about mayors, superintendents, um, uh, the director of you know a utility program, uh, the director of a particular agency, and that leader, whether the CEO, superintendent, mayor, whoever it is, that CIO as well as the other department leaders will have to work with them. They'll have to ensure alignment, commitment, and accountability across the team. That's the C-suite or the leadership group working as a whole. And that's great. You guys are already doing that. There's no situation where a leader or, or a collection of leaders don't know each other's name. But knowing each other's name, sitting in on meetings from time to time, and talking about you know one department's problem with another department, that does not create the buy-in necessary and the alignment necessary to understand from a technology perspective what the challenges are from day to day. And I think the biggest thing that doesn't get talked about and uh, one of the other challenges with digital transformation, technology transformation requires buy-in from non-technical non leaders and non-technical staff. The majority of people using technology uh, day to day are not technology experts. So you cannot wait for a single event as a technology leader to hope that somebody will understand what it is you're talking about when their experience with technology is effectively a VoIP phone solution, a cell phone, an email. That's not, it's just not a reasonable expectation. I'm somebody who is non-technical, but being that I work in this space as a partner and a solution provider, I have a greater understanding and a greater appreciation for the, the, the wheels that have to turn in the background in order to make the hands on the clock tick. I, I see that. I don't necessarily work on it as some of my engineer partners do and some of my colleagues do, but I see it on a day-to-day -day basis so I understand it. How many, if we're talking, if we're just having a, you know, a CIO or an IT leader listen, how many of your non-technical colleagues see the work you do day-to-day Understand why your hands are on that keyboard and what it is you're looking for when an alert pops up. Understand why you value, why your backups are so important to you. Understand what policy means from a network perspective as well as from an internal departmental perspective. And if they don't understand that, waiting for a single event to try to plead your case and get what you need is almost asking to fail. Technology is so critical to everything that we're doing on a daily basis. We do not have the option to wait for a single moment to try to push what it is that we need. And that's not fair to non-technical leaders either. Non-technical leaders are going to be caught off guard by something that is new to them or that they rarely discuss. And now they're asked to be a part of a large decision, which again is another issue with digital transformation being a single event. You are asking somebody to be a part of a large decision on something that they have uh, limited knowledge of. That's a scary place to be in. That's a very scary place to be in. So continuous transformation, when we talk about alignment and buy-in and these things, it's also in a way about making your non-technical team or non-technical leaders and staff and colleagues more comfortable with transformation and change on a regular basis, because that's what happens. As an IT department, you know that things are changing every single day. You see it, you work with it. You know that there's a new patch that came out because a new vulnerability was discovered and we need to make sure that we get it addressed. That's every day for us. That's not what the non-technical leaders understand because they don't know. And that's not their job to know. But it is our job as technical leaders who need to get buy-in from non-technical leaders to ensure that our organizations are aligned and moving in a single direction forward, that they understand what that is, that they understand the impact not to teach them how to do your job, but to understand why the work you're doing is valuable and how they benefit from it, or potentially how the organization will be hurt if we don't do the things that we need to do. Part of continuous transformation is appreciating the importance of each person within this organization. When we talk about our IT department, we stress 
the staffing challenges so much as a critical issue to our customers, particularly when we talk to our manufacturers and about why we want certain solutions to work in a certain way. It is not fair for us to ask our customers to make massive adjustments to a solution we're providing when they have five people working anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a day, five days a week, and one or two people who have to come in on weekends, uh, come in for uh, on weekends for emergencies. It's not fair for us to ask you guys to make massive adjustments. You're already making adjustments on a daily basis. You're already dealing with a boatload of work on a daily basis. That being said, we have to make sure that we are educating our non-technical colleagues on what the realities of IT are day to day. And sometimes if you've tried to do that and they're they're unre they're not receptive, that happens as well. I, I know it's not a matter of we simply in IT are not talking. We're we're talking. We're we're trying our best to, but we can't stop. We have to continue to do that. We have to continue to educate. We have to continue to inform and we have to make that continuous. So that way, when we come to these transformation events, when we have these goals, these strategies, these ideas, um, these beliefs that we have about what needs to be done today or what do we want to get done over the course of the next few months, that it's not something that's catching someone off guard or popping up out of the blue. And as much as that is a challenge to add that to your already big workload, it is something that is valuable. And that, again, is where your vendor partner like DOF, that's where it's our responsibility to help you. What is the ammunition that we can give you? What is the data that we can give you? What are the talking points that we can give you to make that process easier? You already have everything else going on. What can we do to make that process easier so that you can go in and sell your point the way you need to, or being with you to help you to sell that point, to help you to sell that point? And that's something that I think is, is critical to making sure that we are managing and navigating our digital challenges as well as possible. Before, it, you didn't need to necessarily, you didn't need to, to educate your non-technical colleagues on the realities of technology challenges day to day. But look at it from their perspective. They're seeing a variety of policies or regulatory standards or cyber insurance requirements come out. They're seeing things in the news every day. They're dealing with or inundated by a whole bunch of half-truths, pieces of facts, or just sensational stories about IT, IT security in particular, and your job and what you do. If you're not a part of giving, if you're not a part of the process of educating them and giving them a more complete picture, at best, they're going to have an incomplete picture. So that's where we have to take on that responsibility, that burden, which is what it is, and it's, un, it's, un, it's unfortunate, but it's what it is, taking on that burden of making sure to give them a more complete and full picture. So that way they can be a part of the, the buy-in process that you're gonna need at some point in time for you. So we're talking about successful transformation, continuous transformation. We're always looking forward. Everything that you do starts with where you're at today, but if you don't have a clear path forward, you don't have your set goals, it's very, very challenging to measure if you are being successful or if you're getting to success. So the first step is to clearly articulate how your organization will use technology to achieve a strategic objective. What are your business outcomes? What are the things that you want to use this particular transformation um, goal or this transformation initiative to accomplish? Again, when you're talking about technology, what is this technology supposed to do for you? When you're talking about policy or strategy, what is this supposed to help you improve on? How is this supposed to make things easier? Are you addressing a security issue? Or are you simply addressing a workflow issue? You know, efficiency or, or as we talk about um, trying to give our teammates or our team members an easier way to do things is incredibly important. You know, we talk about the workload that our team members have on their shoulders already. If we can take two or three things off their daily to-do list simply by using automation, that gives them the freedom to do so much more or to focus in on things that are more important that require more effort and energy. If they're still working 10 hour days, we may not be able to change that. But if they're able to use an extra hour in their day to focus on something that's a critical challenge, as opposed to some of the other um, peripheral challenges that just end up getting you know heaped onto their plate, that creates an or a positive organizational impact. 
And looking forward, um, organizations should consider their place in the market and where the market is headed. Um, and that market is always changing. You know, we work a lot with K-12. The challenges that IT leaders in K-12 face, that districts and schools face in K-12 with changing platforms, changing standards, changing demands and expectations from students and parents, also the needs of teachers and educators. That space, that industry, that sector is constantly changing. So if we've built a technology infrastructure and have a technology landscape that is filled with potholes or is very inflexible, knowing the nature of K-12, how much innovation occurs in any one or two year period, that's a recipe for disaster. So in, you have to look at where your organization sits within your industry and what industry you're in, how much transformation and, and innovation are we seeing across our space? What are we seeing from a technology perspective as far as the standards we're asked to meet or the different resources that we're asked to support? And that all has to go into that strategy and that plan that you're building. And then, of course, ROI, what's the return on investment? But that, again, is looking forward. What is the impact that you're trying to get? What is the place that you're trying to get to? So to sum up what we've talked about, of course, Digital transformation is a great concept. Digital transformation in no way, shape, or form is a bad thing. The goal of digital transformation is to continue to innovate, to continue to help us as organizations, as IT departments, to do things better and to stay ahead of the problems that may, might be coming up. The challenge, however, is that digital transformation has become uh, sort of a singular event or a collection of one-off events that aren't necessarily connected to a larger overall strategy. For DOF, we suggest implementing a continuous transformation model. And continuous transformation doesn't mean constantly buying new technology. One, your budget doesn't support that for most organizations. And two, it's not an effective way to work. You're going to have new and different resources coming in all the time. Does your team have the expertise to manage and navigate that? Do you have the budget to manage that? All those things, are they going to integrate well and fit together? Continuous transformation isn't just about what you purchase. It's about the plan and the policy that you put in place. How do these things that you do, whether it's a technology you buy or a plan and a policy that you implement, a strategy that you develop, how does that support your team long term? And then most importantly, what are you doing on a regular basis to make sure that you're able to build buy-in over time for your organization. Because that buy-in over time is one of the most valuable resources that you can have. It's almost more valuable than any technology you have because that buy-in allows you to move quickly and to gain the support that you need for your, in for your innovative projects that are so important to you and so critical to you. And that's something that we see a lot of IT leaders face as a roadblock or a hurdle. How many times have you had to convince someone that something was important to you because they didn't see it that way? It didn't matter what the reality was. It didn't matter if there was a policy that was dictating this for you or if there were a series of incidents that showed you why important, how important this was and why it needed to be done. How many times have you had to try to convince somebody who as a non-technical leader simply didn't understand or did not want to, did not feel that what you were suggesting was as important and critical as you said it was. And from that perspective, we understand that we cannot implement a plan of continuous transformation if we are not continuously buying and building support from our organization as a whole. So continuous transformation by no means is easier, is, is not going to be easier than digital transformation. Uh, part of the reason why digital transformation is so nice is that you can do it as a single event. You can plan it as a single event. If it fails, that's fine. You only had to go through this whole dog and pony show. Um, I think that's the right phrase. Well, we'll keep it in. Uh, this whole dog and pony show, um, you know, once every two years or once every four years, once every five years. Continuous transformation is a daily, weekly, monthly event where you're trying to show and guide and ensure that the people around you understand why what you do is so important, why what you believe is so valuable, and the pain of not being on board if something occurs and we are not ready for it. It's not good enough to have a cyber attack team that just sits there and has a policy and comes together you know, twice a, twice a year to say, hey, we met. There needs to be effort, continuous effort in place to make sure that we are adaptive, resilient, 
and proactive in everything we do from a technology perspective. That's our model at DOF, and we work in a way to make sure that we are supporting our customers and helping them to do that. Um, but for any, any IT organization, any organization period, you deserve to have somebody who's going to support you in that way, because that's what's going to keep us prepared. I won't necessarily say ahead, but prepared for a lot of the uncertainty that comes our way day to day. There's no way to predict the next change as it relates to you know, the next wave of cyber attacks. But what we do know is that we can plan and prepare for where we're at, understanding where we're weak, where we're strong, and have a plan in place for what it is we're going to do to get better. And if we can do that and make sure that that is continuously being tweaked, fine-tuned, and evaluated, then at the very least, we can make sure that we're ever ready and always prepared. And by being prepared, we can make sure that we're never facing a catastrophic event. Hopefully these events become, you know, a random hiccup that we overcame on a Tuesday and we were ready to go by the end of business that day. You know, that's the goal of continuous transformation is never being caught off guard, being ready for whatever comes your way and understanding that there's going to be constant change. And it's hard to be ready for everything, but at the very least, we can try our best to be ready for most things. So. This is Saeed at DOF Creations. I appreciate you joining us today. Um, you sat here and listened to me for a very long time, so I appreciate that. Um, but if you have any questions, we're DOF Creations at dofcreations.com. You can reach out to us at solutions at dofcreations.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Saeed Gordon with DOF Creations. Please feel free to shoot any questions that you have to me. If there's anything that you think that I said that was wrong, please feel free to let me know. I don't mind being corrected. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks, guys.